So we're wrapping up 2022 and it's been an insane year. I've been able to go to card shows in London, New York, LA, Las Vegas, San Francisco. I've, I've been over the, all over the place and I'm, I'm so, so thankful. But now things have quieted down a little bit, I'm starting to book flights, get ready for 2023. And I had this realization, I don't, don't think I'm gonna be going to too many card shows in 2023. Now that may be a little shocking coming from a sports card channel, but but give me a second to explain myself. I do have to just give a couple disclaimers before I get into it, because we have a ton of, well, actually people in the comments. This is just for me. It's not me telling other people they shouldn't go or sports card shows or like this particular one is bad or the, it's just, I'm just talking about myself. I, I try to share my journey on this channel, what I'm going through, what I'm kind of thinking going into next year. The first one's pretty simple. It's just simple math. A lot of times, the income that comes in from selling at these shows is not covering the expenses it takes to actually travel to them. Obviously, if you're setting up at a local show and you can sleep at home, you don't have to pay for a flight, you don't really have to even pay for food or anything, I'm sure this is that this equation is completely out the window. But once again, just me personally from my experience, I have not had a ton of success setting up at local shows close to me. So when I go to shows, it's usually a place like Dallas and that's, I don't want to say minimum, but that you got to set aside at least a thousand dollars when you take into account flights, hotel, Uber, and, and table fees. That's really kind of what what pushed me over on this one. And this, like I said, this video is not a a political statement. And I'm gonna continue on actually paying these table fees at some shows in 2023. But at some of these bigger shows, it's six hundred dollars to rent a table, and an additional seventy five for the showcase. So. If you got three showcases and you're renting a whole table to yourself, that's already like, you can you can get to 800 bucks genuinely just to for the privilege to be at your table. Let's 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 do some simple math here. If you are spending $1000 at a card show and you know the eBay usually the fee they take is around 13% for selling on there, you got to sell at least $7,692 worth of cards at the card show just to cancel out those eBay fees. That's if you sell that much on eBay, that's going to be your $1,000 in fees. And I don't know about you, but straight cash. I don't know if I've ever moved five figures at a card show. I know there's some people, I mean, if you're in the high end game, maybe I guess, but I have not seen, especially with how the market is lately, people walking around ready to spend $10,000 in straight cash on sports cards. How do you pay, man? Uh, if you don't write checks, how do you pay these guys? Straight cash, homie. <laughs> <laughs> and to kind of sum that up, we have two forces that are both moving in kind of a negative direction. You know, flights, traveling, inflation, things are getting more expensive. And the amount of people willing to spend cash, specifically at sports card shows, is going down. That's what it is. I don't know if I could find a single person who tells you that there's just, there's more cash at card shows now than there used to be in the past. But it's not all negative though. That kind of brings me to point number two. I have had the most success I've ever had selling online in the past two or three months. In the past 90 days, I've done over $27,000 on eBay just in sports card sales. And most of those are not even expensive cards. See, the problem is at these shows, I genuinely think 95% of people who are attending are dealers themselves or flippers. And I really think like in terms of foot traffic of who's been coming up to my table, it's something like 75% 75, 75 of people who even have their own table, you get another 20% who are there to like really flip and then 5% of people who are there to just have fun and, and, and collect a little bit. So even when I do sell cards, the few sales I make, I look at, you know, a lot of times I'll have multiple of cards, right? I'll, I'll sell one at a show for 60 bucks and I'll be like, ah, okay, that was a little low, but that's fine. I'll take it back on eBay and sell it, sell the same exact card for 120 bucks, you know, one week later. So yes, of course there's fees on eBay, but the math, the math isn't mathing with how it, it's been going lately. So once again, this is just me, this is just my experience, but even including fees, I'm bringing home way more cash. It's way easier. Just drop it in the mail. Don't have to deal with it. And I'm, I'm just meet, reaching a much broader audience, especially with soccer cards, right? So maybe this is a little skewed. I do a lot of soccer cards and getting those international eyes on it online makes a big difference, obviously. But it's not just eBay though. I mean, I sell a good amount on Instagram. I recently started selling on Whatnot 
did my first ever stream, had so much fun. I, if any of you guys were there, really, really appreciate it. We got more coming up. I'll put a link to my profile in, in the description. It's, it's just great, you know, like whatnot's a really fun experience. I'm not great at it yet, I'm getting there, but you get that quick liquidity, get that little interaction with people. I think it's fun. I mean, if any of you guys are interested, I'll also drop like a referral link or something like that. You can apply to sell on whatnot. I think that's a fun way to do it. So that's just something to consider as well. But really like when I reflected on the year and look back at my expenses and stuff, I'm consistently pulling more money in selling online and I don't have to spend as much time sitting at a table versus selling at a card show. So for me, I was just like, all right, well, I think online is gonna be more of my focus. And that kind of brings us to number three, final point. I wanna more efficiently use my time in 2023. So disclaimer, this once again, this is not, if you wanna to go to card shows, go. Especially if it's your local show, it doesn't cost you anything, go have fun. Some of these shows, even the big shows that are expensive to travel, you know, I'm going to the national and stuff, obviously. It's a lot of fun. They do a great job. Everyone should make their own decision for themselves. I'm just talking about my personal opinion. I don't think, I, especially setting up. Like me, myself, I'm actually, it's still not gonna be as many as 2022, but I think I will still be going to a good amount of card shows in 2023, but I don't think I'm gonna be setting up very much. And I'm definitely not, you know, in Dallas, a lot of people, I've, I got there literally on Wednesday one time and left on Sunday, too much time, too much time. Like this next Dallas show, I think my plan is I'm gonna get there early Friday, I'm gonna leave Saturday night. Don't think I'm gonna set up try to do a little buying, see some people, enjoy trade night, all that. But I think that's gonna be kind of my new plan for me personally going forward as a more efficient use of my time. It just, it, it honestly like kind of took a lot out of me. This, you really are just drained after all that traveling. It doesn't sound that hard like, oh man, like you gotta go and look at cards all day, but. Does somebody need a ambulance? A lot of times I'm like stuck at the table. I'm not eating. You know, you don't sleep as well, not in your bed, the traveling, connecting flights, it, it's a lot. So I still will definitely be going to your big shows, your Burbanks, your Dallas's, your Nationals, all that, but I'm just gonna cut it back this year. And a lot of that is because I wanna focus on other things still inside the sports card hobby though. This isn't like, I wanna make it clear, this isn't like, oh, I'm not gonna do sports cards anymore. I'm as focused as ever, but I just wanna do it like more fun content, uh, more whatnot stuff, just, that do some shorts, do some do some interesting other stuff. We won't get into too into the weeds with that because this isn't content creator talk, but I still want to spend just as much time, but I think my time would be better served in other places in 2023. So just let me know, what do you want to see? Like, do you want to see certain types of videos? Do you want to see like certain stuff on whatnot? Do you want to, I don't even know. This was definitely more of a, a rant type video, but just something a little bit different. Hope you did enjoy. If you did, uh, make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Peace.